Today, I'd like to share some secrets with you. Secrets that are actually inside you. And secrets that might change your belief of who you are and what you are capable of. Now, in 2014, a very special man passed away. Professor Dr. Wibbel Ockels. Wibbel was a scientist, but also the first Dutch citizen in space. Now, when astronauts fly off into space and turn around and look at Earth, they see this little planet in this vast universe. And they have a moment of enlightenment, when they suddenly understand we all have to do it together on this small, fragile ball. There is no difference from that distance between us and the planet. It's one organism. Wibble called our planet Spacecraft Earth. And he said, we don't have a spare planet. It's just one. We, mankind, he said, are so strong, we can save this planet, but we can also destroy it. And in the process of saving it, his last word before he died of kidney cancer were, even a small thing can do something. Now in Holland we have a saying that says, a better environment starts with yourself. Which is true, right? If we all put solar panels on our, pl on our roofs and we separate our, our garbage and we eat, we stop eating fish and meat, it will become a better world. But I'd like to take this to the next level. Because a better environment doesn't start with you, it starts inside you, deep under your skin. Now, what's there inside you, deep under your skin, that could change the environment in any way? Let's, let's, let's research, let's discover that. Now, I was raised with the belief that we only use 10% of our capacity. William James, the father of modern psychology, he said we use 10% of our mental capacity and we don't use that other 90%. What is that other 90%? And for a long time I thought, well, that's something, that, that must be something with intelligence that we'll find out, we'll figure it out somewhere in the future. But now I know it doesn't have anything to do with intelligence. What if this hidden potential, this 90% we're not using, what if it's more about memory, increasing our memory? What if it's more about self-regulation? What if it's more about decision-making? What if it's more about your autonomic nerve system, influencing your immune system, maybe even influencing your body heat? What if we have much more control over our mind and body than we think? And what if that is that 90%? Now, for the past seven years, I've been traveling the world to, in order to find that last 90%, to expand human potential by expanding my own. And that search brought me to Asia, where I lived together with my partner for a couple of years, and studied with masters, with teachers and scientists, to figure out what it is, that 90% potential. And I found a group of people that actually hold keys to parts of their potential. Monks and nuns all over Asia practice yoga, meditation, breathing techniques, and they found a way to actually dig into that 90%. Now, scientists, neuroscientists in the field of neuroplasticity, they discovered those monks and started to do brain research on them. And they found that their brains are actually very different from us. An interesting study done by Dr. Herbert Benson, a Harvard professor, is this video you see here. It was taped in 1985. He studied Tibetan Buddhist monks who are able to increase their body heat. And not a little bit. They take wet sheets and take them over their body, put them over their bodies, heat up their body heat to an extent that the, the sheets not only dry, but steam 
comes off. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? What if you would be able to do that? What if we all would be able to do that? What would that mean to our need for heat? We could stop using heat. We could save tons of energy in our houses, in our offices, in our factories. We could change the world. Because a better environment starts inside you, deeply under your skin. Now, maybe you think, hey, Robert, this is a bit far-fetched. You know, monks, Tibet, heat, bodies, sheets, you know. So let's take this a little bit closer home. During the traveling, I stumbled upon a man one day, of all places in my own country, a man that in his own practice was able to, well, to influence his body and his system and his mind to a deep extent. There's a man called the Iceman, Wim Hof. Wim is able to stay in ice for one hour and 45 minutes without dropping his body temperature. So I decided to go and study with him. I spent about a year with him, on and off. And one day I heard of his aspiration to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. Not alone, but in a group. Ordinary people like you and me. People who have almost no mountaineering experience. There were people with cancer amongst us, people with Crohn's disease, people with multiple sclerosis. And we were planned, planning to take this trip and climb up Mount Kilimanjaro, not in the usual five to seven days, but in three days. And not dressed, but basically half naked. Not to show off, but to demonstrate that everybody can do this. Now, before I continue, I have to explain a little bit about Mount Kilimanjaro. Because it's the highest standalone mountain in the world. The top is 6,000 meters high, 5,895 to be precisely. And the oxygen level at the top is about half of what we have here at sea level. It's freezing cold up there, and normal climbers take five to seven days to get up the mountain to acclimatize. They are dressed because of the cold. And we were doing it in three days. As you can imagine, almost no medic, expedition medic, wanted to join us. We were lucky to find a very, very good one. Almost no company wanted to sponsor us. And the Dutch Association for Mountaineering actually said that people were going to die or at least get severely hurt on this irresponsible mission. But we did not die. And we did not get hurt. All of us made it to the first summit, Gilman's Point, 5,600 meters. From the 26th, 24 made it through the ice and snow to Uhuru Peak, the roof of Africa, 5,895 meters high. And 15 of us made it without a shirt, made it half naked. The temperature on that mountain was minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is about minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, when we stood there in our shorts. And the thing is, we did not make it in three days. We made it in 48 hours, two days. Now, what was our secret? How did we do this? <laughs> <laughs> and it was cold up there. Now, what was our secret? How did we do this? How did we find the key to that part of our hidden potential? Well, it's not even that difficult. We use a method that's called the Wim Hof method that's based, uh, that basically holds yoga, meditation, and breathing techniques in it, Asian techniques, and everybody can do it. And what if everybody would start working on meditation, no matter what method you use? What if we all would practice? Maybe we wouldn't need pills and powders anymore when we got ill. Maybe we would be able to not be victim of stress, but to regulate our own stress level. Maybe inside you, there's a giant that has much more possibilities than you think. So let's have a look at science and see what science tells us about it. 
And the first, this first experiment was done at a Dutch university where a group of men were trained in cold exposure, yoga, meditation, breathing, Wim Hof method. They were injected with a, with a bacteria, a dead bacteria. And it turned out they were actually able to deliberately switch on their immune system. They didn't get ill, and the control group did get ill. The end of the autonomic nerve system. This study, recently done on Harvard, is, well, done on simple mindfulness practice. And it turns out that after eight weeks, people start taking better decisions here in this part of the brain. Memory increases. Pain tolerance goes up. Eight weeks. And this study shows one of many studies that show that meditators can regulate their stress level at will. Relax and stress. So, who is interested to regulate their stress level? Can I see some hands? Okay. Shall we do it here, right now? Yeah? Can you all stand up, please? What we'll do is help you to bring up your stress level and then take it down again. So, just take it step by step, I'll talk you through it. Step number one, increase your stress level. We'll do it by fooling your nerve system. Normally, when you have a stress reaction, a fight flee reaction, what happens? Blood goes to the limbs, tension, breathing goes up, pupils, you know, alert, alertness goes up, because you need to be ready to fight or flee, right? So let's fool the nerve system and pull it, put it the other way around. Stand actively, please. Tense the muscle of your legs and your arms, like this. Breathe high and fast through your nose. Look at the floor with fear as if a crocodile comes out ready to get you. Okay, there we go. And don't worry, we're all together. Nobody's looking foolish. <laughs> Come on, faster, 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 faster. More tension, more tension. More fear, more fear. Three, two, one, and stop. Okay, who feels stressy? Good, good. That little uncomfortable feeling. Normally when you get out of, you know, you get out of a day of, at work and, and everything was tense that day and you come home, you have this feeling, what do you do? You take a glass of wine, take some chocolate, work some more, right? Watch some television. From today, all you have to do is breathe. So we did a little bit of stress, uh, we'll do some exercises to downsize that stress again. Can you all sit down again, please? And thank you for standing up. Okay, what we'll do is a very simple exercise that is used by snipers in the American army after they had a long march, they need a perfect relaxation to take a shot. And we'll use their technique to relax. Can I ask you to close your eyes, please? We breathe in for four seconds, and I will count. Breathe in through your nose. Hold for four seconds. Breathe out for four seconds, and hold again. Do it three times. There we go. Breathe in. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Breathe out. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Breathe in. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Breathe out. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Last time. Breathe in. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Breathe out. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three. Okay, open your eyes. Who's, who's, who's still stressed? Works, doesn't it? 
Okay, one more to go into relaxation. Very simple. You breathe out using letter F. After you breathe out completely, you squeeze the muscle here and you use S to empty yourself. Let me demonstrate. <laughs> right? Okay, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Here we go. Breathe in a little bit, and there we go. Hold, hold, hold your breath. Don't breathe in. Relax and breathe in. And breathe out again. Hold your breath. Yes. And breathe in. So who's feeling relaxed now? Yeah, almost everybody. Well, in a stressed country like Holland, this is amazing. <laughs> so you actually accessed 90, a part of that 90% of your potential. This is how easy it is. This is the start. This is where it all begins. Now imagine you would do more of that. Imagine you would take 30 minutes of your time every day, of the time you watch television or work, and turn it into practice. Meditation, yoga, breathing. Things will start changing in your brain. You will start changing. You will start to mine that 90% potential that's inside you. What if we would all do that? What would happen to us? We would become different people, more conscious, more abilities. A better climate and a better environment starts inside of us. Inside of us, deeply under our skin. And we're talking about climate active cities today. What about climate active humans? What if we would all work on ourselves, take care of each other, take care of this planet we're on from inside out? Because we can think and talk about environment and climate change as much as we want. But if we want to make any difference, and somebody who knows told us this, if we want to do, make any difference, be the change you want to see in the world. As our beloved astronaut Wibbo Ockel said, we only have one. We don't have a spare. This is it. We're on it together on this journey through space and time. We, mankind, are so strong, we can destroy this planet, but we can also save it. Start with yourself. Start tomorrow. Because even a small thing does something. Thank you.